Hey everybody, what's up? Don Carr here with another round of What's on Your Pedal Board, and today it is ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba, Josh Scott. Good to be here. Oh man, so glad to have you here, man. This is uh, this is quite a treat. I did one of these where Paul Paul Gilbert interviewed me about my board. This was several years ago. Yeah, I've tried to like up it here. You know, I, my rig has changed. Of course it has. It's been two years. I mean, okay, let's start with the fact that not only do you design pedals and have your own very successful pedal company, you know, for those of you who've been hiding under a rock, you are not just a fan of pedals. You are a lover of pedals, like with the fervor you know, that no one else has. Nobody loves pedals like me. No way, man. It's, I mean, pedals are musical. Let's just start there. But Yeah, it all really spiraled out of control. <laughs> and so, you know, like where we film, there's mm -hmm. roughly 4,500 pedals in this room. Everything historical you can imagine. Yeah. So... When you see my board, it's one of two things and I haven't figured it out yet. It's either this part of me knows it's impossible to choose and I just become callous and cold and just throw stuff on my board. Or like maybe it is the most meticulous thoughts and it is perfectly curated. And I go in between how I feel about my board all the time. But there's like core things I always do and then... Mm -hmm. There's like the peripheral toys you play with, right? Sure. The favorites, you know, yeah. of the moment or whatever. And I really, like, I haven't played live in so long, but I do a lot of, like, tracking guitars for friends sure. and working on records. And then just, it's like we play on YouTube. Yeah, right. Which is weird. Like, if you... <laughs> it's sort of live, <laughs> like I but try it's to, live? <laughs> I try to picture, like... Hmm. 2000s me and a band touring and like someone walking up, you know, from a shadow behind mm -hmm. the stage, you'd be like, in 2022, you will be a YouTube guitar player. Like, and I don't know, like, I don't know what, what that, you're like, <laughs> what, what? Does that mean? Is that like real audio? <laughs> is that on Winamp? <laughs> anyway. Oh uh, man, I think it's part of MySpace, isn't it? MySpace, yeah. Zanga. So, being serious here, honestly, this is sort of a, you know, look into the mind of what you're thinking at the moment or what you may have been thinking at the moment when you put this together. But it but it <clears throat> talks about, you know, it talks about practicality, it talks about workflow, it talks about mm -hmm. usability. And it's yeah. you know, and everybody individually has their own version of all of that. So I just think it's I always just think it's a cool peek into what you're thinking. So Yeah, my mind's a scary you know. place. So let's yeah. jump right in. Let's do, man. Let's go. Where do you want to start? Where does the signal originate? Well, I mean, from the yeah, so from I the think, guitar, obviously. I think but. the foundational elements for me that are pretty much always in place is a clean amp. Mm -hmm. And if I'm at home, I play a Softec MiG-50, which is a bassman, literally. I have a Milkman amp that is actually sold here. A lot of people don't. We actually do sell this amp, and somehow it sells. It's expensive, <laughs> but it's like the, the JHS Loud is More Good amp. Yeah. Which is a, it, you could think of it, this is oversimplified, and Tim at Milkman would shoot me over this, but it's like a 40 watt version of a Princeton. So it's it's kind of basement-y, mm -hmm. but it's less rip your head off. You can yeah. crank it a little bit more. And what I really like about that, the MiG-50, a basement in general, and one of my favorite amps ever is I have an, a 90s Tweed Blues Deluxe. Oh These yeah. are like yeah. the DS1 of amps. But I love this amp. I've designed most JHS pedals on this amp. It's like I found it in a pawn shop for 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. And if I can't gig with that, the amp's not the problem. But it's generally clean amps with mm -hmm. a just simple EQ. And I tend to put everything at noon, which is psychotic, I hear. But it's just how I perceive the clean sound of the guitar. And then I'm always playing single coils mm -hmm. and primarily jazz masters. I have this nifty Squire... 40th anniversary that we literally ripped from a customer's hand we in the did. store. We did. It was, if it you're was watching, kind of sorry. Great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't really, it, I like the offset body because I'm a giant. I'm 6'6". <laughs> six, six. Yeah. When I play like a Telecaster, which I love a Tele. A Tele's my favorite guitar probably because I can do anything with it. But I, it looks like a mandolin, you know. I don't want to be. <laughs> it's very toy-like. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Dave Matthews playing a mandolin. Like it ends up being up here. So this offset body feels good. Yeah. And I'm a huge uh, user, and and uh, it's the hair club for men thing, where it's like I'm not I'm only not, a client. I, I'm, the, I'm the president. <laughs> I'm the I'm president the of the mastery kind of Fender 
Jazzmaster trim system, and I'll mm -hmm. I'll use it a lot subtly as a manual pitch vibrato. So if I'm doing big chords, which I tend to play with a lot of ambience, I can move it a little because I'm usually the only guitar player. And so the, this board and the way I think about guitar is generally like I am the soundscape of the guitar. So there's a lot of freedom in that, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the tricks I. The foundation of my tricks is just a single coil offset guitar, clean amp. And you gotta use a coily cable. And a coily cable. Yeah, <laughs> just cause you have to. Yeah. <laughs> to that end, mm -hmm. to achieve all of those things that you wanna do, a lot of that's gonna happen on the pedal board. Yeah, really everything. Um, everything. Cause that's your gain and your ambience yeah. and you know. Pretty yeah. much, I can't tell you the last time I played a dirty amp. Like it was probably a session 10, I, I have a memory of, I have an amp collection I never play. I'm not a hoarder, I'm a collector. <laughs> I have this, like the little Supros and I would I would crank the yeah. little Supro amps and those are wonderful, but that's just, I just don't ever do it. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the next foundational thing is I always use a Morning Glory, which is my pedal. Mm -hmm. It's our most famous pedal. It's how I basically started JHS. It's always on. So if my clean sound is this, that's a great clean that sound. That is a killer clean That's sound. the sound of my polytune. So a little spring reverb from the amp. Doesn't hurt. Uh, I have it on here. You know, sometimes I will, sometimes I won't, but I'll get into that later. That's what I'm going for. Just a, just a good sound with bass, mids, and treble. Clean. If I was at a venue, I'm not scared to turn it up to the edge, but yeah. but that's what I'm going for. And then I'll have this on. So I'll do my check, make sure that's in place. And then stage one is never off. Little bit of compression. I'm gonna be messing with knobs all the time because it's actually doing this as we do it. But see the bridge is dirty. Neck is nice off on so i just leave that on yeah and it gives me the tiniest bit of compression and it feels like the amp is twice as loud and everybody's happy and kids aren't screaming and blood's not coming out of people's ears not blowing speakers you know yeah. nothing nothing bad all good things yeah and i turned 40 so like i'm starting to just devolve into an older quieter person i think <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's, yeah. This is the bass sound always on. Yeah. A little bit of spring reverb. Right, right. Good dynamic range too, you know, like yeah. so you can like clean I up can, a little bit, you know. So a lot of, a lot of the sound comes from this. And I, uh, these picks, I used to make fun of people about picks. I would say you're out of your mind if the you think the pick matters. And I started using these really thick, uh, we give them away with our pedals, but the gravity, gravity, they're like made of Krypton or something. I guess something like that. But it's there's this, I think, there's this yeah. thing with how it attacks and it really does something. And I feel crazy explaining it, but it, it's a part like I hate playing without this pick. Yeah, no, I, I it sounds weird to me. I no, I totally get it. I am like I, I have my go to, I use an Altex one. That's just kind of my standard. Yeah. But I have the most ridiculous pick collection of all these different picks because they all do something different. And if I'm in a especially in a recording scenario, it'll be like, oh, wait a minute. You we know. should do a history of guitar picks. Man, episode. that would be amazing. Twelve people <laughs> would watch it. <laughs> but we'd have fun. We would have fun. We'd have so much fun doing it. Okay, so Morning yeah. Glory, always on. Okay. And, and this is big for me. Bridge to neck is very yeah. different, you yep. know. The neck is gonna be my like prettier thing. Right. And if it's if it's getting dirty, it's always bridge. Cause that's a part of the, the right hand dynamic for me as well, is knowing the possibilities of these pickups. Right. I don't ever mess with this stuff. You oh, can, no I could, kidding. Unless we'll get to it later. Okay, Fuzz. We'll get to it. But ah yeah, yeah. But okay. yes. Yeah. But interesting. I yeah. could gaff tape these and smile all day, really. Nice. Well, uh, because yeah. yeah, I mean, because it's kind of built into the guitar a little bit. That's mm -hmm. part of the jazz master sound anyway. Yeah. And and you know. this circuit up here is the worst circuit ever invented. Like 
So I use it as a cutoff switch. Oh, that's so cool. So if I have a bunch of distortion, I'll do the Les Paul thing with it. Like the what's the frequency Kenneth or like yeah. Tom Morello Ridges yeah. machine right. stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah, Ace Freely. If you're going to go way back. Yes. Beep, 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 yeah. Beep, beep. yeah, that thing. So, um, so next is? Next would be adding to the... I feel like we're we're like forty five minutes in and I'm on the second pedal. This yeah. is an extended director's yeah, cut. Yeah, this is uh, it's th it's stacking gains for me. Mm -hmm. So, the morning glory is always on and it has to be considered like a foundational <laughs> part of the sound. So, technically, the only drive pedal that I engage is a Klon. Okay. Now I don't care that this is a real KTR. I actually modded the crap out of it and I have all these real clones, Klon clones. There's nothing sacred. I just have to say this because if you've watched my channel, I've ranted about this and stuff. And as, as a collector, it's an important story. Absolutely. I have the first one ever made. But at the end of the day, there's so many great, like you could right now at Sweetwater buy a Soul Food or a Archer. There's like a hundred Klon clones. Yeah. But the point is I like the Klon as a overdrive distortion. So mm -hmm. I turn the gain almost to three o'clock, okay. treble is always up, which is pretty neutral. Yeah. And then I just kind of... And to me, I'm actually gonna turn this verb off. It's a, it's a little deep. The bridge of a jazz master with this stack mm -hmm. is like, it's the tone of dreams for me. Like as a, like all the rock stuff, I like the Pearl Jam, the, yeah. The records like Third Eye Blind Blue, Radiohead, The Bins, mm -hmm. I, all of this, it falls into this category of just. I don't think there's a better drive sound that I'll ever find because it just works. You can you can go to the neck and be like. If you want to be John Mayer, yeah. or you can go back to that bridge and play huge. It's all I need, and I just turn it off and on. So, so I'm rather boring, but everything is there. It's yeah, it's functional, and again, it gets back to like yeah. how you think, and that's what's in your ear, and that's the sound that you want yeah, to get and, out there. And what I learned is. I really, people make fun of me on my comments. No. Cause it's like, you love every pedal. Yeah. I really do. I know. You know, my, my favorite pedals are, I love a rat pedal, right? But here's the problem. I have a fuzz here in the place of what I would normally do with a rat. I can take any drive pedal. I'm just admitting this on camera. I just make them all sound the same. So like, I, I just quit trying to play that game because it's like you lose your mind. Like it turns into like a Hollywood movie where the person like loses it. I just do everything with these and I don't worry about the nuance because nobody hears it anyway. Like it, no, nobody it, hears it. I, well, it's all for, it's, it's for the player. It the is, nuance yeah. is really for the player. I, I mean, get honestly. everything I want out of these two pedals. Of course, if I had a rat, I could have this other sound, but like nobody hears it. If I'm tracking and it's a must, I'll throw a rat down right here, right? Yeah. Or an old tone bender. But I can get everything out of these pedals. So that's the that's the dirt. Yeah. Now, I always have a fuzz. I like all fuzzes. I'm a huge fan of fuzz. I see fuzz as an instrument. A lot of people will get a fuzz and they'll like, they'll buy a fuzz pedal, right? They'll go to the Sweetwater store mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll buy their fuzz pedal and then they'll like play their Smells Like Teen Spirit riff and they're like, this sucks. What's well, like, the fuzz has to be considered in even how you're playing. It is a part of the guitar. Whereas drive pedals, you can switch them on and off and play. You can go from, I don't know, Smash Mouth to Creed to, that is a horrible transition <laughs> oh, to what? whatever. You can but, do anything. But it's a long way. And when you turn on a fuzz, <laughs> yeah. it's like, uh, you have to play to it. So mm -hmm. this is, I did this uh, uh, 66 series with Sweetwater. Yeah. It's like I hand built them in my basement with my family. This is one nobody's ever seen. I've made a couple oh, oh. and given to friends. Cool. It's a hybrid fuzz face okay. kind of thing. And uh, mm. meaning it's germanium and silicon. And it's just, it's my, it's one of my favorite little fuzz tinker things. So this spot changes, but at the end of the day. It's 
just a fuzz face type, like a really good, strong fuzz face sound. Again, notice I'm never touching this. Right, that's still on. Because I'm mm -hmm. treating it like I believe in the amp being dirty helps the fuzz. Sure. <laughs> And that this is where I would roll a tone back. And it cleans up. This is Stein. So I'll use that. And then there is one pedal I only use when that is on. This is like ridiculous the more I talk through it. Do you You're, see a lot of this though? It's like methodology. It is. And it's as it's going down the line, it's getting they're adding exceptions yeah. and we've got a few changes. I'm here finding and, myself yeah. saying things that like my wife would make fun of me for. Like I have this pedal only for this pedal. <laughs> only when this is rolled. Like it sounds yeah. ridiculous. So this is a little thing uh by Land Devices. It's this just real small mm -hmm. one builder company up in the Pacific Northwest. It's a, uh, it just adds a dirty octave, like an old Dan Armstrong thing. Oh, so. Neat. Like. So you can do everything from, you know, play some Hendrix, play yeah, some Jack White. Exactly, the Octafuzz thing mm -hmm. and you kind of the... Yeah, and yeah. you know, a lot of this too, going back to why the things are chosen is because we're jamming YouTube, whatever, with mm -hmm. friends or someone's like, hey, come play. Like I just played a, a friend's new single, like play guitar on a track. It's, you know, Miles Davis said, the greatest artists are thieves who never get caught. And it's like the pedal board to me is kind of just, I want to be able to kind of rip off my favorite sounds if I hear something in my head, and that's why it's kind of crazy. Yeah, but that's so, the reference point, though. And yeah, that's, you again, and you out know. of that you find an original thing somewhere sure. in there. Sure. So that's the dirt, and then there's other. There's two, <laughs> there's two other pedals. More that exceptions. Are, <laughs> now this is where the cheat comes. So okay. I have I have the bass sound. Is I could right. honestly just put that under the board. Yeah. So that's my dirt, right? then that's my fuzz, right. that's added to that. But I can have this on and engage this boost. So this is just before the drives to make them dirtier. So yeah. just like if this was a Les Paul all of a right. sudden, I would have more dirt. I'm using this boost to thicken it up and have a little more. So it's like stage one, stage two, stage three. Right. Question mark. Yeah, well, we're back to spinal tap. It's all the way up, all the way to you go. Right. The so push over the cliff. The, the morning glory. Add the KTR, add the Prestige. It, and, it, and it's more about even how it feels and how it, it'll hold the note. And again, one more is just, I have a Beano here, which is a treble booster, mm -hmm. because I like a lot of treble. Um, we were ranting earlier. I think a lot of guitarists sit in their room with their quadra, left, right, center guitar rig with tons of bass. And then you go play live and it sucks because there's, there's no reg recorded yeah. guitar in the history of man that anyone likes that has bass in it on the track. <laughs> they cut it out because yeah. you have a bass guitar. And kick drum kick and all drum. that other stuff that's going on. So treble to me is important. Um, and you just have to get out of your head when you're rehearsing at home. There's two different worlds there and it's really important. So treble boosting, if I'm playing a solo, which is rare because of the style, I'm not like gonna shred or something, but I would hit the treble booster most likely. And I'll use that with anything, the fuzz or whatever. And that yeah. would be something like. In a solo environment, it's a little nuts, but in the mix, it's what you're doing in a mix to a record anyway. You're boosting these, because a treble booster is not really a treble boost. It's a, it's a mid high mids boost. Right. Which and the guitar is a mid range instrument, and so you're trying yeah. to poke out in that. Yeah. You know, frequency so, range. Anyways. So this insane little L is like the dirt corner of madness. But in yeah. my head, it's a second nature, and I have these ways I'll stack stuff. But that's that's it. Yeah. 
So from there, up front, uh, before my drives, after the fuzz, the mm -hmm. signal path is actually fuzz first because that's just the better way to do it with the what, just the fuzz will sound better because it has a germanium transistor. I actually go into a univibe. Now, I have a pedal called the Unicorn, which is a tap tempo univibe. Yeah. This is the version one of that. I made these a long time ago. It's called the Warbletron. Same circuit. I, here's the humor. I just don't care for my own pedal. <laughs> like I updated it with tap tempo and stuff, but I realized like I don't use the tap tempo, but it was such a feat to do it and people love it. I actually just am really boring with the way I use Univibe. I don't do this sound. Like this is the sound you always hear like the Now it's there if I want to play machine gun on something, but what I do with, with a Univibe is vibrato. I run it like that. And the Warbletron, this was one of my earliest pedals. I can kind of reach down and like. So start stacking. It's one of my favorite like rhythm sounds is just to, you, and again, when a band's on, it feels like you put on 3D glasses, but it's not, you're not sure what's happening. It just sounds good. A, a really, there's two really great examples of this. One is Madison Cunningham, and the other is Dawes, the lead guy for Dawes. Mm -hmm. He usually, or used to, he'd run a Boss VB2, and it's just kind of on. Mm -hmm. And you'd hear him play, and you're like, God, this sounds like thick. Like, But it's not even that it's an effect, it's just. That's actually a little more than I usually do. Yeah, when you add delay with that, it gets really nice. So there's no modulation on this delay. It's really pretty to me. Yeah, I mean, I that little bit of motion, that's, you know, that's like that, you know, like the SCF, the TCSCF, that was that same yeah. thing. It just added just some motion across the field. Yeah, you know. I, I'm hoping that as an effects builder and someone who loves pedals, I'm really, I feel like we're getting to a point with gear where people are starting to care about these effects that aren't necessarily like in your face. Like yeah. there's a, there's, it's more about depth and feeling and 3D-ness mm -hmm. and that's really Enhancement. Fun to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's okay to have a pedal, like a lot of people will use this guy, even bass players, they'll just leave it on and you turn it off and you're like, what happened? But it's just a little, like mm -hmm. I call them more better sounds. Yeah, yeah. And that's definitely how I use that. Yeah. Also up front before the drives, I use a pitchfork. Oh, okay. So I use this as a whammy. I used to put whammies on my board, but they're just like stupid. They're huge. And the other, I'm just like, I'll say stupid again. The other stupid thing I would do, so I have this big red whammy pedal and I would gaff tape the toe down because I only used octave up toe down. Yeah. And I hear you all saying, well, Josh, just buy an octave up pedal. No, because the whammy, <laughs> is horrible. It doesn't track right. It has a weird glitchiness to, to it. And that's the sound. Yeah. It, exactly. Like, so for me, I don't want the clean octave. Get me away from it. It's like a, it's like a plague. I yeah. want this glitchy thing. <laughs> and that's a radio head. That's where I first heard that. Yeah. And it's just, that does it perfect. I have a jack over here somewhere. Uh, basically, I modded this with a switch. I will not mod yours, sorry. I just, I can feel it. <laughs> I was gonna ask, cause I've got one. So you don't need it. I, what, I, yeah. what it is, is I can throw like a cheap expression pedal on the floor. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to be Tom Morello mm -hmm. or the edge, mm -hmm. it's an option to yeah. throw the pit. Cause that is a fun sound, whamming the octave. Yeah, yeah, I, you, I, I just keep an expression pedal hooked to mine all yeah. the time. The, the, my fear of that is the judgmental part of me comes out. And when people overuse the octave up whammy, I, again, I want to die. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those things. So I, I actually restrain, I keep myself away from it. It's like, it's like a drug addict knows to not get near it because if I start doing that, no one will let me play guitar for them because it's so annoying. <laughs> So 
<laughs> and you'll be doing it all the time. I'll just like <laughs> what'll happen is I'll be playing a gig and that pet and it's there. And then I'm just like, woo, I'm just diving the whole time. And I think I'm like Tom Morello and it's Rage Against the Machine 1998 and I lose yeah. it and then I get fired. Yeah. So practicing restraint with your effects is another pro tip. <laughs> Again, if you add, you know, a, a, a sound that I would go for a lot. <laughs> simple i mean that's just the octave up fake whammy which i think the pitchfork is the best option for this if you want that sound because it's so small and it's so cheap yeah a quarter note delay i usually never turn off it depends and then just the two gain stack sorry it works great with like octave Okay. Agreed, man. I love. I actually love the pitchfork. Yeah. I use it in a bunch of different ways, but yeah, that's that's a great it, sound. It does the octave downs, mm -hmm. and I mean, dude, how cool is this sound? Like for real. Uh, I don't know where to use that, but like that's like the ultimate bedroom. Like, feel good about your like. You gotta go to bed, but you got ten minutes, and you want to yeah. get really prideful. You're yeah. just like. <laughs> Right? You feel like a guitar god, but yeah. I don't actually use that. But it's there. But if you want it. Yeah, it's there if you want it. Uh, this is uh, just a C2, mm -hmm. old school boss pedal. Yeah. Chorus is back. I've always liked chorus, but again, you had to be careful. There was a mm. period of time where if you pulled a chorus pedal out, you got judged yeah, so hard. Yeah, immediately, man. Yeah. yeah. And you've you've played through the era where it was king, you saw it die. Right. It's back now. Mm -hmm. Like how does that feel? It feels great. It's like vengeance. It's <laughs> yeah. back and it's pissed. Yeah, it's I mean, like, really, it really like is. For man. you, I was talking to Paul Gilbert about this. It's like I imagine it's like you had these shoes and you wore them all the time and they're like your favorite kicks. And then one day somebody's like, those are dumb. So you put them in the closet and you wait 23 years and then suddenly you're like, you put the shoes back on. Again. You're like, oh, I can wear these shoes again. Chorus yes. is like the shoes in the closet. It's yeah, back. It is. So I use it all knobs up. I mean, chorus. The, that's the, the classic tone. You know, if you want. Or, you know, you can fake everything with that. And it's also nice to just throw that rate mm -hmm. knob up. I, that's the sound. Of, that is the perfect sound of chorus to me, is the yeah. C to, I don't care what version, but just, I love it. And a lot of my playing style is that alternative, and I'm a huge, mm -hmm. like, shoegaze is a lot of delays and some of my favorite bands and styles. And Radiohead and bands like Sonic Youth are the bridge into shoegaze, which is, like, if, you, if you're not familiar, like, My Bloody Valentine or Slow Dive, it's just a lot of choruses and delays and big, slow, huge songs. Starflyer 59 is another favorite band. And so a lot of this is like that ability to do like a classic, it might, you know, I guess 90s rock is classic rock. It is classic oh! rock now, man, it is. So the classic <laughs> rock I grew up on, or go full shoegaze. So, you know, yeah. to be able to play a Third Eye Blind or Pearl Jam song, or do shoegaze, or do Hendrix. Yeah, or any 80s. Or any, any yeah. 80s. Like if I wanna become Brian Adams. You know, the sound. So next up is the Milkman F-Stop. F-Stop, okay. It's, so Milkman makes the amp for me. Loud is more mm -hmm. good, it's sold here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this he makes a couple pedals and they're really cool. It's All it is, is it's a pedal that is spring reverb and tremolo that you would find in this amp. So okay. that lets me always have those sounds when I run over to my friend's house and all he has is like some 98 knob Bogner amp and I set it clean and yeah. I'm like, okay, how set can I make this down. a Fender amp? Right. So the spring reverb. Right. Or add your tremolo. <laughs> Because 
I, most of my work is spaghetti western. <laughs> Surf or spaghetti western. <laughs> I, I'm taking bookings now. Um, I'll play on your spaghetti western album. Thousand dollars an hour. I, if if you have a uh, spaghetti western bar mitzvah, <laughs> yeah, or, or I know. Mall opening. I know three, four mm -hmm. hot licks. I'll mm -hmm. repeat that crap for hours yeah. all over your record. And then my favorite Earthquaker pedal, and probably my favorite of the new era builders. So I would throw JHS in there. Me and Jamie are, you know, Jamie yeah. Stillman, the amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my favorite of like that new era in the historical categories, mm -hmm. uh, builders like me who are approaching 50 now. <laughs> we start... <laughs> aging, are you aging out? I'm 40. <laughs> I, I'm just really focused on my age are a lot. You, I feel, are, in, yeah. You are 40, you're pro we're, I guess we're all technically approaching 50. I'm approaching it from the other direction, unfortunately, but... <laughs> right. but <laughs> right. I'm actually it's, backing up It's funny because, it. like, it's... I, what I'm coming to terms with as, as me yeah. is, like, I'm an older pedal builder now. That's weird. Like you're experienced. I'm like I'm like the older one. I'm like I get phone calls for wisdom. <laughs> like I have builders text and call me for mm -hmm. advice. Yeah, and you're like, wait like, a minute. And you know, they call me. I'm eating my oatmeal, and you know, and drinking Metamucil and stuff, and they interrupt me, and it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so Dispatch Master is just a yeah. huge delay. It's a delay, and then it has a reverb, and they're like together. So it's like an all-in-one. Yeah, so that sounds like drastic, right? But the way I would, that tends to be a sound I go for. There, there's a slide sound that I really latched onto off of a Coldplay record that's called Russia Blood to the Head. Um, Coldplay has a real love or hate relationship, but the first two records, I think it's some of the better guitar work and tonal things that are like very interesting in a long time. And then, you know, they become a pop band and people hate them, whatever. But these records are raw rock records. They're yeah. pretty much tracked live. And the guitar work is great because there's a lot of slide things that it's like the use of slide as a melody more than like, instead of being like, you know, what is it? You know, there's that slide. Right. Or it's like add, uh, you know, turn on a dispatch master, have a, have a gain stage and... Using slide as a voice for yeah, as like a, a melody line. Yeah, and so, absolutely. and I'll even combine that with like ebos and mm -hmm. things where it's, you know, you basically keep sustaining that kind of sound. So. Make a loop. So it's like a reverse delay patch. You get the idea. Yeah. So it's another way to make the guitar not sound like a guitar is somewhat, I think that's part of the this, the music that got me most into effects, like Sonic Youth mm -hmm. and these shoegaze yeah. bands and some of the grunge alternative stuff from the 90s. That's like a after effect of that. And then really the last thing is this flashback four. I think I have the most comments ever of people seeing my delay pedals over the years and being like, what? Like, that's always, because I think they're expecting me to use, like, I've even had people say, why do you hate Strymon? And I'm like, I don't, Strymon's amazing. <laughs> but they see, like, they'll see me use a Boss Giga Delay, which is, like, yeah. $89 at a yard sale. I, I know I had one. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's, yeah. That's probably my favorite yeah. delay. Or, like, the Flashback 4, like. This, Got one. This yeah. right now, how much yeah. is this at Sweetwater? It's like free. I think I think so. so I, think, <laughs> I think they pay you to take it, I believe. It I'm just, not really sure. It's all about user interface. Mm -hmm. I think my comment on delays is, I'm going to disclaim this, disclaimer. I have genius friends in the DSP world, Source Audio. Like, unbelievable DSP. Strymon, friends, amazing. I could just, uh, uh, Maris, just, all these brands, 
But at the end of the day, I use two or three delay sounds, and it's not about having a ton of options because I'm not going to use them. I'm not going to use presets. I will never have a MIDI controller. Like you'll have to kill me, prop me up and like wire it in. Cause it's just not me. Like I just want it, I want the analog of it. I want the, the UI, the user interface to be analog. Meaning that there's a digital pedal. What I mean by the analog user interface is like, I want to look down and see big knobs that are like dumb, dumb proof. And I want to be able to like turn it and like have a couple, three presets and a tap tempo button and move on with my life and just make music. So that's why I like this. Actually, this is probably better than the Giga Delay because you just have three patches and a tap button. So, and you have a bajillion modes. So if you're in the studio and you want something crazy, mm -hmm. put it on there and track and move on. Mm -hmm. But live, I'm going to use this sound. It's a quarter note analog delay. That's way too much feedback, but to demonstrate. This is basically like, it would be like my Panther Cub sounds or like a Memory Man or yeah. just an analog. Like. Now, in a real life scenario, I would back that feedback off. Make it a little less. And you know, that's probably gonna stay on. Like, because when you're in a mix. When you have drums blaring and stuff, and you're the only guitar player. Again, you're trying to cover some sonic space in yeah. that area. Nobody's in the crowd area. going, his delay mix is hot. It's just, uh, it just feels bigger than, yeah. it, it's artificial. Yeah. And so the other patch I'll use is, the flashback does, again, flashback's winning. There's already two things. The UI, UI is probably nicer than the giggle, giggle, giggle delay. Boss giggle delay. It makes <laughs> giggle you giggle. It. giggle. You can it. use that boss. Yeah. Um, is to have a quarter note going. I used to use two pedals. I would use a Panther Cub, mm -hmm. and then I would have like a DD5 as a right. dotted eight, and I'd have the Cub on a quarter. This has a setting where it just does, it stacks the delays. Yeah. So if I do an A note, you're having a quarter. So my tap tempo is right like that. So you're hearing, and you're hearing da-da. So it's both. The most obvious way to demonstrate this is just like U2 stuff, yeah. but. If there's a big octave section or some massive kind of, or with the slide, you know. In my style of music, that chaos, the way I like to hear melodies and octaves, it's allowed. You can have all this spillover. Yeah. Because it's just part of the chaos. Like. And then it, I, it creates dynamic range, and yeah. you know, it, yeah, it just adds to the arrangement, and you yeah, know, it's a big chaotic yeah. mess that you can control. Like yeah. that's a way of looking at it. And then I love reverse delay, so. There's a million ways to use this, but. another thing yeah. to make the guitar not a guitar yeah yeah and that's heavily influenced again by the same people same kind of same kind of music that's the board yeah yeah and so it's textures that's what it is it's, it's textures, textures really simple tones <clears throat> you know the humor is i think i did a pass on a friend's like country record with a mm -hmm. telly like i'm not a country player but like i got like four good licks you know and like 
played there some because you, you know the newer country's like it's basically seventies rock. Yeah, and then you gotta you gotta throw in your like <laughs> and kind of like pull off lick. Right, but you can do it with this. You don't have to use it all. Yeah, I think ironically it was probably a slap. I just put a slap on here. And I think I hit an amp with a treble booster and it was wonderful. So yeah, it's all about just then calling it out, like not using what you don't need. Yeah. And at any in any given time, if I were to if we were to jam and go play around town, I'm probably using two pedals at a time. Like it just depends. Yeah, it's just that you want yeah. to have more than two options. I think a lot of the same way in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, just you're taking your core sound and you're adding colors to it. And it's the same type of things. You want a little motion, you want a little yeah. delay, you want a little verb, you know, you I, want something crazy occasionally. You know. I think over over the last, I would say almost 20 years, I probably have used the Klon Morning Glory, or before I had JHS, mm -hmm. it was a blues breaker, and that's what the Morning Glory is from. I did that stack 20 years ago. That's, I mean, Klons were like 300 bucks. Yeah, and wow. I've, yeah. I've pretty much, at, at times I would put a rat on the board. Right. Right. But at the end of the day, it's funny because the pitchfork, I used a whammy. Yeah. Yep. This thing, I had yeah. another one. Yeah. It's, it's all like I'm just doing different versions. I've literally not changed. Yeah. I, it's, I, it's the same pedals, yeah. but it's like the different yeah. name. You have yeah. the blue one now. So you have a have blue, a blue one, one. You know, I think I'm a firm believer that people die musically at a certain point. And I died in like 2003. So everything I do is before that. I think we all, every band, every musician, there's this point of death. And you just, in, you're just like, oh, those are the good old days. And that's just what you do. So I'm that person now. <laughs> cool. That's hey, it. Well, it sounds great. And the other cool thing about that is, okay, so you got that board. You're still getting all your sounds. You've got, what have we got, a, a Tone Master? Oh, yeah. Twin? I'm playing yeah. a Squire. Yeah. Do a solid state Fender amp. Yeah. And it, I, this Tone Master is amazing. I first played it here, one of the Paul Gilbert videos we yeah. did, I think. I just love that this is like so affordable. It's so and everything easy. I'm doing here, there's some budget version that sounds great. Like even our three series, our EH pedals, or yeah. like the cheaper TC pedals. Yeah. You could build this rig. I just played everything I played and I never felt less than my normal gear. You know, I'm the, I have a. The guitar I mainly play, it's crazy expensive. These two guys built them in the Midwest, but that's yeah. not what makes my sound. It's the chord structures and how I pick and stupid things like this that add up. And, you know, having a good, having your sound, I think we accidentally, you have a sound one day. You wake up and you're like, I'm stuck here. And that's okay. Yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, watching get really hung up. A lot of my customers really hung up on like, more money equals better sound, and it's not true. No, so. it's not It's not at all, because, I mean, the sound really honestly originates from your head and yep. through your hands, and it's the giant filter of all the yeah. things you've heard your entire life coming out, you know, and it's like, like you say, 2003 for you, man. That was uh, yeah, everything man. prior to 2003. There yeah, it is. I didn't miss a beat <laughs> on this Squire that's honestly amazing, yeah. and then the this sounds really great. Yeah. This is my rig for now. I'll be yeah. back in two years with the same rig that looks different. That looks completely different. <laughs> nice. Josh, man, cool. thanks. Thanks yeah. so much, dude. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And if you have any questions about most of the pedals on here, I think, or uh, or just if you have questions about Josh, just uh, make sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or check out Sweetwater.com. Thanks.